chapter 11 verse 28 to 30 the lord says come to me all who labor and are heavy burden i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light let these words kind of sink into your hearts because sometimes familiarity breeds contempt you know you know it so well it may never really allow the words to go into you i remember you know i'm very close to my dad two years ago my dad went to be with the lord and last year suddenly my sister sent me a video and sent me a video which i have never seen before she had quietly taken when my dad was talking with the family and there he was telling you know how much nice things about me you know for all the people he was just talking he has four kids and he was talking about wonderful things about how much he loves me and how much i matter to him and these wonderful words and i was watching this video around this time last year and i just broke down i just cried so much and it's like not that i knew not that i did not know that my dad loved me but those expressive words of how much he cares for me and how much him how much i matter to him really really brought me down seriously and i was thinking you know how much if my dad's word matters to me so much how it means to me so much the weight of every word i was like rewinding hearing it again rewinding and hearing it again and sobbing i thought lord your words your words how much it should matter to me how come i become so familiar with your words at times and it doesn't impact me you know if only you can go back 2000 years back and when jesus was coming out of capernaum he was actually talking about all those people who were in capernaum and corazin chorazim and all these places where did not hear the word of god who didn't really care about what he was saying and then he makes a call out to those people on his way out of capernaum and says come to me come to me all who labor and are heavy laden you know these words is exactly what a father would say to lovingly to his kids you know he'll be looking at his kids these words are coming from a caring father watching over his kids who are striving who are laboring and carrying too much burden on themselves the, these words kind of tell how the father knows exactly what situation you are going through right now in this very minute the knowledge of your struggles the knowledge of your pain the knowledge of your needs the father knows it all and it also reveals the heart of the father the intent of the father that he wants to give you rest he doesn't want you to carry on the way that you are going on these words also offer a solution it's not like yes i know what you're going through too bad it's not that he says no i have a solution for you and these words are so heavy if only we could take that recording if only i could find a video of jesus saying that and send to you and say and just place your name right there and says come to me brother nebu come to me brother rob come to me diane come to me debu if only you could play those words and say how much hope will suddenly rise up within you how much you would be sparked with excitement and say hey god is there for me he will take care of my situation i'm not going this through by myself if only i could impress the intensity the waiting of these words into your heart that god is actually calling you jesus is personally calling you in this verse there are two parts one the call jesus is calling you you're not talking about a person this it's jesus himself it's not jesus as secretary it's not jesus as company it's not just a church it's not just a pastor it's not somebody 
imagine the god of heavens the the lord who made everything that was and is and is going to be and he's just looking at you and said come to me come directly to me many a times when troubles hit us jesus may not be the first person you're running to you know your first would be like oh how much balance is in my bank or who can who can i ask help for will that person is influential enough to help me at work or in the family member can i borrow money from this person your mind might go here and there but jesus says come to me first is calling come come to me how lovingly you know imagine many of us are dads here if a kid is hurting or in pain would you not call come to me i'll take care of it this is exactly what jesus is telling to each one of us he says come to me all you are heavy a heavy burden and who labor you don't need an appointment you don't have to come next month or it's not that he's going to call you and say two months later you know when there is a vacancy i'll call you you come and see me then we hear that all the time when we make even a doctor's appointment isn't it we wait two months to get to a doctor but god says just come into my throne of grace just walk in i'm there for you let's take this very seriously so the sec it says who is he calling to he's calling to those who labor and are heavy laden labor and heavy laden i can identify with that who is the one who labors laboring is those who work heavy work you know more than they can handle the one who tries very hard to put food on the table do we not all run and labor to get food on the table for ourselves for our families for our kids but then this is a bit too much much more than that if a man is required to work for his living god doesn't the word of god doesn't support laziness the lord wants us to work hard the the lord is all about being proactive and working but the lord doesn't want his children to be laboring under a very heavy weight imagine a labor laborer out in the sun you know digging and pulling up sand and working very hard it's it's a place of not being very comfortable right many of us go through that in life we run so much for work just to have enough to provide for our family but god looks at us and say you are laboring too much many a times god hears the cry that we have in our heart and say god this is too much burden on me i cannot do this by myself how many of you have prayed that prayer it's too much for me lord i can't handle this laboring where will i go for my provisions who is going to provide for my my needs how am i going to build a house how am i going to provide for my children's future my strength alone is not enough many a times we have labored there god is calling out to you to the tom harry and the normal person who is sitting here and say come to me if you are laboring too much i have a solution for you and the second part is god is saying those who are heavy laden come to me so who is it who is heavy laden who is it it's a person who is carrying a load that is much more than they can handle am i right so it it if it's not just a burden it is a heavy burden a burden that you can't bear any more by yourself it is weighing down on you now think about a heavy burden i think about the mental stress that people go through mental stress troubles that come out of children troubles that come out of spouses or in relationships things that you can't handle by yourself is beyond your control but it is affecting your life and you think god i can't handle this i cannot move on this mental pressure is so much on me the pressures of work mental stress that comes from a boss who is very mean to you a, a mental situation where you're not able to provide what will i do for tomorrow that, that that's the situation you know this causes so much mental stress on e- each one of us many a times this may not be a physical thing but it takes a um a psychological impact on us 
the, the psychological burden that people carry is so heavy you only need to talk to a few and then you will realize how much burden people do carry on themselves you know some psychological burdens may have come up on you because of words spoken on you people may have put you down people may have humiliated you publicly people would have made jokes about you and this kind of stays within a person's heart it kind of mars their being it takes away the confidence every time you think i have moved on and then you put in a situation and it all comes back to you you're not able to move on many people go through abuse in their life is have you gone through abuse in your life that may have happened long long time ago but you still carry the burden the psychological burden within you which you can't come out of some people the people whom you would have trusted fathers you may have trusted relatives that you may have trusted friends you may have trusted may have let you down but god says don't carry that burden by yourself i am here for you God says don't do this all by yourself come to me and exchange it with me Hallelujah you're sitting in his presence this is your day of deliverance if only you can reach out to the lord and say lord i can't carry this anymore the mental pressure the psychological pressure that i'm carrying within me many times people don't know but when they come to a point where they have to stand up and do something or you know perform they can't because they are held back by things the burdens that they're carrying in their heart people go for advice people go for therapy it may be superficial you know it, you might think you have sorted the problem but then later on when situations arise it all flares up again you don't even know that you're carrying this burden many a times today just reach out to the lord and say lord this is an area where i struggle as a burden in my life lord come and take over this area the lord wants to have, have compassion on you he has compassion on you and this morning time the lord really wants to speak to you to say let's have an exchange let's have an exchange for some of us it could be financial burdens the debt might be climbing up you don't know what you can do how much more can i work how much more can my wife work there's so much left from my past i cannot sort it out is there a solution for me but the lord says yes i have a solution for you come to me for some of us what does this heavy burden mean and i just want to expand so that it will make you start thinking it will it will help you to apply to your own life for some of us the burden might be spiritual it might be soul connections that you have to let go things that from the past things that you may have sinned in the past that that is like a burden on you which you can't forgive many people cannot forgive themselves let alone forg- forgive others the things of the past might be hanging on to you so burdensome that you can't let go every time you come to the lord all you can remember is the sins that you have done and you keep repeatedly saying the same sorry is over and over and again remember that god has forgiven you and forgiven you forever he does not remember it anymore let's not remember that and let not that become a burden for you the lord wants to cut off ties this morning time that are burdensome on you ties that come from your forefathers things that your forefathers may have sinned that that may come upon you you know to identify that is you, you just need to look closely into your life are there some repeated failures that you come upon are there repeated things that you see that what your f- grandfather went through that your father went through your mother went through and then you go through that is there like hereditary things that is hanging on in your life is that being a burden on you you say like i'm trying everything i'm trying my very best possibly i can but yet i'm not able to live freely i can't live successfully there is something that is hindering me i can't put my finger on it but there is something that is pulling me down many of us could be even christians who may would have walked with the lord but there could be things that we have not dealt with from the past 
the lord wants to remind you are there things in your life that is holding you back is that becoming a heavy burden on your soul for some people it's even the connection with the dead connection like soul connections that they had in the past that that they have not healed from that they have not severed from that is becoming a burden on you and possibly might become a burden on your children the lord wants to address those things this morning time because he's a lord who loves you very much he's a loving father who wants to set you free today the lord is speaking to each one of us what is it that you are laboring what is it that you're holding in your heart what is it that is holding you back from fully working into the ways of god fully performing for him fully living a successful life in this world the lord says come let's have an exchange hallelujah hallelujah so this is the day of our deliverance so this is the day that the lord wants to set his people free many times we go around putting small bandages on things where we have to have a surgery God says let's not put a bandaid over things and let not things fester underneath let me have my way in your life come to a place of total surrender we we sang this morning said lord i surrender all lord i surrender everything that i am are we coming to a place of total surrender this morning the lord is saying take a moment and let's pray and say god let whatever is coming to my mind what is the burden that i carry the burden about my children that they are not in the lord the burden about my family that they have not accepted christ yet the burden about the work situation that i have lord i can't find a job that is my problem lord i do i can't find a settlement in my life i'm moving around like a nomad lord find settlement within me cry out to the lord this morning time speak to the lord this morning time and say lord i want your rest i just want to address this particular burden this thing from my past the unforgiveness that i'm hanging on to i want to forgive this person but i can't every time i say i forgive them but when i see them it all comes back to me i'm not let, able to let go Will you speak to the Lord and say Lord I release that person this morning time I release that burden this morning time Will you speak to the Lord this morning time and say Jesus I release that person Jesus I release the person who abused me Jesus I release the person who put me down and talked badly about me Jesus I release my family who belittled me Lord I forgive Lord I let go would you surrender would you surrender this morning time and say Jesus I want to exchange my burdens for your rest Lord I want to I don't want to be laboring too much more than I can handle it is not your purpose for me that I am constantly running and running and running with little reward God put, bring me to a place of abundance bring me to a place of rest did you not say in psalm 23 that you will lead me in green pastures and you will lead me beside still waters oh good shepherd have your way in me this morning time would you not exchange your burden with the lord this morning hallelujah hallelujah have a conversation with the lord and say lord this one thing is is a, such a burden for me father i cannot let go of the people who died in my life lord i let that let go of that lord i let go of people that i've been holding on to that is not healthy lord i let go of some relationships of some friendships that is not from you father let it not become a burden on me hallelujah i sever every spiritual bonds that i may have from the past Oh hallelujah Lord I let go in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you heavenly father
Thank you, Jesus, that you are working in your people's heart, O oh God. Let there be an exchange this morning time. Let there be an exchange this morning time. Let your people bring their burdens down. Let them cast it at your presence, O oh Lord. Lord, we come before your holy throne, O oh Father, at the feet of the cross. We lay every burden that is troubling us. We lay every burden. We cast our burdens upon you, for you care for us, O oh God. And we don't have to carry this burden anymore. For you are a faithful God. For you call your people unto yourself. And say don't carry this burden about your child anymore. That child will be okay. That child is in my hands. Release that daughter. Release that son into my hands. I will take care says the Lord. Release that person at work into my hands. I will take care of your situation. Don't worry about your debt too much. For I am the Lord who provides. I am the Lord who gives you strength to earn money and I will add no so sorrow to it, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we lay our burdens at your feet. Lord, we lay our burdens at your feet. Every fear, that fear that torments us, we lay it at your feet. Lord, the fear of future, the fa fear of failure, we t leave it at your feet and we say, Lord, Lord, I can't carry that burden anymore. That fear I cannot carry anymore. I lay it at your feet, Father. Lord, you take control of this situation. You take control of my life. Take control of my days, my future. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Lay it at, your, at his feet. The master is calling you. The master is calling you. Hallelujah. We thank you and praise you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Secondly, when we go to this passage, the word of the Lord, he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, if you have all these burdens, come to me and I will give you the rest that you need. In our minds, when you think rest, it just feels like you're not doing anything, right? It just feels like maybe almost to the point of doing nothing or cruising along. But that's not what the Lord intends here. It's, the Lord is all about rest. For, for you know, when we read in the seventh day, the Lord rested from all his work. And even when he was telling the commandments to the people of Israel, he says, you know, for seven years you can sow. In the seventh year, let the, let the land rest. And then he says on the 49th year, in the 50th year, also you have a year of rest. Everybody should have a year of rest. God is all about rest. But at the same time, the Lord is not telling, do nothing. Just lace around. No, that's not what God is saying here. God wants his people to rest, not only in the physical, but also in the mental. When he breaks the bonds in your life, he wants you to come into the rest, a, a phase of being restful, to be peaceful, knowing that everything is under his control, that God will take care of every situation. You know, So when you're carrying something, you're not very restful because it's on you and you the one who have to perform you are the one who has to solve the situation but when you give the burden to the Lord you come to a place of rest knowing that the Lord will take care it shall be done in the Lord's mountain just as how God provided for Abraham on that mountain a lamb it was no longer Abraham's burden to provide that sacrifice unto the Lord it's just knowing that the Lord will provide that he will be your Jehovah Jireh in every situation. There may be a storm that is blowing around you, but he will be able to keep you in perfect peace. It's the state of inner peace that is what the Lord is offering here. And he says, come to me if you are very heavy laden and you are laboring a lot, and I will give you that rest because it will be no longer who's you being carrying the burden because I have taken it on myself. The word rest in Hebrew, the word is called menuka. It, it, it's the manuka honey you get, right? It comes from that word called manu, menuka. It means it's a rest that is so sweet. It is so pleasurable. That's what it really means. That's why the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And that's why the psalmist says, 
He is sweeter than honey. The Lord is sweeter than honey. The rest that comes from God is so beautiful. It's, you, can, you could be going through the toughest problems in life. Your health might be falling apart. Your finances might not be doing great. But you have an assurance that God is in control, that he will take care of it. You don't have to worry. You don't have to stress. You don't have to stay awake at night. You don't have to put 10 plans together on how you're going to face tomorrow. It's just like chill back and say, God, you're in control. I will taste and see that you are sweeter than Manuka honey. That is what the Lord is implying here. See, it's the confidence and assurance that comes from knowing that everything will be okay because God is in control. And I, I love to say this. Has God ever failed? He's never failed once in the Bible. And why would you be the first person that he's going to fail? And God has got you. And he's saying, come to me, that he's the one who invited you. You didn't go to him. He said, come to me. He made that open invitation. After making an open invitation, will he not take care of you? Your responsibility is to just to give that burden to him. You can come to him and still hold on to your burdens. But Jesus says, give that burden to me. And I will give you that pleasurable rest. Secondly, this passage talks about the exchange. So it says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In the second part he says, learn from me how to do this. Because he introduces himself. It's so beautiful how Jesus introduces himself here and says, I'm very gentle in my ways. I'm not harsh. I'm not judgmental. I will not say, how many times have you fallen? How many times I have, you know, taken your burdens and yet you fail? He's not going to say that. He just says, I'm very gentle. I'm very gentle on your souls. I don't judge you. I will not call you out in public and humiliate you. I'm very gentle with you, says the Lord. I'm lowly in heart, which means I'm down to earth. I totally know what you're going through. I know your struggles. I know your weakness. I know the needs of your family. I'm not a pompous God who's out of touch with my people. He knows exactly what is it that you need. The tuition fees that you have to pay for your child. The shoes that you need to get for your daughter. He just knows every single detail of your life. And he says, I am there in the details with you. He says, take your yoke upon me, and my yoke is easy, and my burden is light, and you will re find a rest for your soul. The Lord says the best way to get that rest is to exchange. Now the Lord moved in our midst, and you would have given your burden to him and say, God, this is my burden, and I give it to you. But the Lord says, let's have an exchange. Let's trade. You give what you have on me. It's quite heavy burden and it's very labor intensive. I'll take it on myself. But then you also take something from me. You know, the Lord could have said, just give it to me and just walk away and, you know, have a cruisy life. Why did he not say that? And I was wondering, why did not the Lord just say, give all your burdens to me. I'm your father. I can take care of it. And why did he not just stop there and said, you cast your burdens and just walk away. He didn't say that. He said, learn. Learn from me and take my yoke from you. Because what happens in a human is, when you have a burden, you run towards it, you work towards it, you strive for it. When it all goes away, you have nothing to do. When there is no purpose or nothing to do, that's where sin enters in. How many of you have found when, when you go through the highs and lows of life and you pray, 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 and you get what you want, and there's this peaceful time. During that peaceful time, if you don't focus on God, many a times distractions will come. And you engage yourself in distractions. And the next minute you find yourself drifting away from God. 
this is what happened for example let me say king david you know he was a wonderful king and he had a burden and a trouble that was saul he was running and running and running from saul and the lord gave him rest from saul the lord gave him the kingdom to look after after saul the rest he has he was looking after the kingdom that was god's burden on him and he was doing it well for a while then he found a gap a window of opportunity where he did nothing he was just lazing and he was just having good food good music and he was walking upstairs on the terrace and having a good time not looking after the kingdom work no was he busy running away from Saul he had a period of rest and that was a period of temptation from him for him he had enough time to be distracted by Bathsheba that led him to sin the lord can take your burdens away it's easy for him to do that but for the lord to make you to grow into a person of personality in the kingdom a person of usefulness in his kingdom a person who is transformed in the likeness of christ he needs for you to carry his burden because otherwise the vacuum and the emptiness will bring sin in and it'll draw you away from god and before you know you'll entangle yourself in another burden in another laboring that's why the lord says come to me and take my yoke for my burden is light and my yoke is very easy and i was thinking you know okay okay lord what does your burden really mean what is your burden you know the blanket answer that comes is do god's work yes and overall summary that's what it is and i was thinking lord what does it really matter for me tell me lord what is your burden what is your yoke that i have to carry in my personal life and i was meditating and i was asking god lord tell me teach me what is it god that you want my family or me personally to do and i was waiting and i was praying this last week and a half and the lord clearly spoke three times over to my husband and through others what is that supposed to be for our family and for us and the minute that clarity comes in it's like a switch that is on you know a light bulb moment and you think yes i know god will take care of this all these situations all my burdens when i put my focus my energy my efforts into this work of god you know just knowing that itself brings you so much rest so much peace and this is what i want to encourage each one of us this morning say yes we exchange our burdens with the lord but what yoke are you going to carry what burden is the lord is expecting of you it's funny to even think you know the lord even has burdens that his heart is also heavy about things is just not us he also has cares and if you look into what are the things that break god's heart what is burdensome for him there are some of these things that came up to me definitely this is not an extensive list and we should work go away and work and find out for ourselves what is it lord that you want me to carry what is the burden that you are carrying that you would like to pass on to me i am willing this morning so that i will not fall into sin that so that i will not go into distractions that i will carry your burden the lord says one of the burden that he has is who will go for us who will go for us in isaiah chapter um 6 verse 8 the lord asked this question to isaiah and said whom shall i send and who will go for us and isaiah responds and says lord here i am send me the world out there doesn't know god your families don't know god your fam your work members your works uh, you your friends around your workplace they don't know god the heart of god is for this generation he wants to reach out he wants to see but he is he does he is not walking around here like 2000 years ago you are his hands you are his feet you are his body you are his temple and he wants 
Say, who will put up their hand and say, God, send me. I will go. I will go to my community. I will go to the Aboriginal community. Lord, I will go to my Malayala community. Lord, I will go to my Tamil community. I will go to the Western Power community. I will go to wherever you're working, the Chevron community. Lord, I am there for them. Will you send me? I am there for you. I will take your burden. I will be your mouthpiece. If your burden is so much for these people, God, if you are crying over them day and night, you have done everything that you have come down from heaven to make provision, I put up my hand and say, God, I will take that burden for you. Will that be you this morning time? Send me, Lord. Here I am. Use me, God. Here my hands, my feet, my body, my intellect, my education, whatever I am, I am for you. You, you sang this morning, I surrender all. I surrender all. Surrender every talent that you have, every ability that you have, every, every opportunity that God has given you. Could it be for him? Could you carry his burden for him? There's a second burden. The Lord says, who will fill the gap? Who will fill the gap? In Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30, the Lord says, and I sought for a man among them that, that should make a hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should destroy, not destroy it. But sadly the Lord says, I found none. When sin rises in a land, when sin rises in a family, the judgment of God comes upon that place. The Lord is looking for an intercessor who will stand and say, they say, God, don't destroy my family. Don't destroy this person. Don't destroy this land. Give it more time. Lord, I will pray for these people. Is there somebody who will run and say, God, relent from your anger on this country, on this nation, in this world, in this family, in this situation? Have mercy, God. Will, will you be the person who will stand in that gap and say, I, I take responsibility, Father. I will pray for them. I, pl I will pray for this situation. Please don't pour out your anger on this, in this place. God is looking with burdensome heart. You know, it, it just tells the, the deepness of his sorrow. He says, I sought for a man among them. I looked and I looked and I looked but I couldn't find one person who will say, will vouch, that say, I will pray, I will do something about this. This land is before us, dear children of God. The Lord has brought many of us as migrants to this country, and we have also the sons of the soil in this place. Will we take a stand and say, God, I will pray for this nation? I will pray for the revival in this nation. I will pray for the salvation of this nation. I will pray for the nations that are suffering. We hear news all the time. Do you immediately bow down and say, Lord, I pray for Afghanistan. Lord, I pray for East Timor. Do I pray for Haiti? All these countries that are going through, I know about this. Do I take it as a burden? Surely you must be burdened up in heaven. Do I take that? The Lord says, I'm still looking for people. There's not enough people. Every time you see judgment poured out, it just indicates there's not enough people to stand in the gap. It's not enough that we turn around and say, I'm so sorry for this country. I'm so sorry for your situation, dear friend. No. If, ju if you see judgment and wrath being poured out, you just see God has been looking and he, hasn't not he has not found enough people to stand in the gap. And God is looking at you and saying, would you not carry that burden for me? Would you not labor for me a few hours on your knees? A few hours in a week, would you not set aside and say, Lord, I will come and I will pray. That's the least I can do. Amen. Thirdly, the Lord is lo looking for loyal hearts. God is looking for loyalty, people who will stand up for him, 
will be a voice for him, for him in this generation when there's so many loud voices out there for unrighteousness when there's so much loud noises out there for sin to grow will the church be quiet will the people of god be quiet will we take a stand like pastor said just like shatrak meshak and abednego you know they took a stand and said no whether god saves me or not i will stand here and i will do what is right for the lord you know in one in two chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 how beautiful it says it says for the eyes of the lord run to and fro to and fro that is means zigzagging over and over and over again throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who whose heart is loyal to him will your heart be loyal to him will you allow yourself to stand for him and not be quiet many times it's easy to be a passive christian you know when the voices are so loud that speaks against the ways of god at work with our children at school in the society see the news clipping do you even write back to the editor to say this is wrong i take a stand and say no what you're saying is not acceptable because i want to be loyal to the ways of god for his righteousness i will stand you know when you take god's burden the kingdom of god stands behind you for your for your for your burdens for your cares the lord is looking for loyal hearts this morning and that's his burden fourthly the lord is looking for people who will teach their children and their next generation that's his burden the lord is very burdened about the next generation do you know that god cares so much for you god cares so much for your personal needs but at the same time he has an expectation on you that he that you will teach the next generation about the ways of god that's his burden not only your children but others children the generation to come we are doing a fantastic work, work with our kids ministry yes we are carrying the burden of god god can we expand that could we do more give us the grace lord it's your work your burden that we want to carry in genesis chapter 18 verse 19 you read god tells a beautiful testimony about abraham he says for i have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him that they keep the ways of the lord to do righteousness and justice that the lord may bring abraham that the lord may bring to abraham what he has spoken to him so the lord is testifying about abraham that the lord says that he knows that he will command his children and his household how serious are we taking to instruct our household and our children that is god's burden that's god's burden he's given a massive responsibility on each one of our shoulders to grow up the children in the ways of god so that the peace that comes from that is your reward hallelujah let me move fast and so the next one the lord says i'm looking for people who will declare my praises and my testimonies many times we receive and receive and receive from god how much are we standing up and declaring his praises in isaiah 43 verse 21 he says i have formed these people for myself that they will some day honor me before the whole world i'm reading from nlt there and i have formed these people for myself that they may declare my praises many times we're so comfortable to come and testify in church but the true testimony is at work the true testimony is testifying is within your family within your friends amongst your friends how god is expecting i have done all these things for you i have shown my mighty arm for you i have rescued you i have given you life i have heard your cry i have paid your debts do you declare me among your people among others god has an expectation that one day that we will declare his praises 
how else will others know that god lives and that he moves unless you testify are you vocal about his testimonies that is again a burden of god because they others are never going to know the characteristics of god until you speak about it until you tell out of your experience otherwise all this are words until it becomes some reality in somebody's life how much hope it brings to others many times we been become so hopeful hearing other people's testimonies but if you hide your own testimonies how can god put his word out there sixth the lord says my burden is for my house that my house will have enough that my house will have enough god has given us stewardship each one of us is a steward of all the blessings that he has given the families the money the responsibilities we are we got to be good stewards of what he has given us right and let's read from malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and it says bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the lord if i will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it the lord says bring all the tithes bring the full tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house god's house who who's supposed to look after god's house us the god has god has entitled like given us that responsibility so that there will be enough for god's house he he has an expectation he depends on you pretty much the lord depends on you so that his house will have enough are we being good stewards of what what god has provided us number 7 god is zealous about building his house god is saying we heard from pastor last week and the exhortation this morning the lord says who will build my house who will dream big for me everybody looks after their own household dreams big dreams for themselves big dreams for their children big dreams for the future nothing wrong with that he is with you he is going to honor all your dreams in he will provide for that but who's going to dream big for god who's going to build his house the lord says in haggai chapter 1 verse 7 and 8 he says thus says the lord god of hosts consider your ways go to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that i may take pleasure in it and be glorified the lord says build up the house of god so that there will be a place where he is honored where let nations come to him in that place where his name be glorified where his testimonies will be declared where it will be a house of healing where there'll be a place of deliverance a place where demons are defeated if there is no house for god how can the lord expand his kingdom how can he show forth his glory that's what the lord says let me show forth my glory build a temple for me how can you live your life just looking at your own self expand your thinking may god expand our thinking this morning time as we go forward and take his burden for building his house finally the lord says feed my lambs feed my sheep in john chapter 21 verse 15 and 15 to 19 the lord repeatedly has this conversation with peter and he says feed my lambs feed my sheep that's his burden the lord has many sheep which is not yet in this in this fold he cares for them and he says like feed them that's my burden that's what is really weighing down on me give them the food they need think about the lambs that are in your care your little children the little the people who have just come to faith who can falter and fall any time are you being gracious to them don't be judgmental to them the lord is asking of you will you carry that burden for me will you carry that yoke for me and i will take care of your situation hallelujah many times god 
is only looking for willingness and availability from each one of us. Because you know why? Because taking his yoke, carrying his burden, is very light. He says it's very light. Because you're not really going to do anything, pretty much. It's just your willing heart and your availability, say, putting up your hand and says, God, I have this much time I can offer to you. I will come. This is all the money I have. I'll give it to you. This is just the willingness and the availability that God is looking at. Looking at. But the work itself, he's going to help you because he's not asking you to go and do everything in your own strength. He's going to provide you everything that you need in order to execute his burden. That's why the Lord say, Paul says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, sorry, it's Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, it says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So as you take the burden of God this morning, he is the one who will even give you the power to do that. He will be the one who provides the finances to do that. He will be the one who gives you the health to do it. He is the one who will give you the ability, the confidence to stand up and to talk and to, you know, perform and to pray and everything. He will provide. He is the supplier for it. So the Lord just says, you're not going to go and do it out on by yourself. I am there with you. It is God who will enable you, dear children of God. That's why Paul says in chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58, always give yourself fully to the work of God because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So whatever you do for God is never in vain. The Lord is never a debtor to anybody. The Lord so lovingly takes all your burdens on himself. And he says, be a proxy. Just take my burden on you. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will give you courage. I will enable you to run with the calling that I have placed in you, the dream that I have placed in you, the burden that you have put up your hand and said, okay, Lord, I will carry that burden for you. I will give you every strength, every, everything that you need concerning that. And all you have to do is depend on me. How beautiful is that? You know, how do we go about this practical application? I was thinking, God, I, I sat at the feet of the Lord and I asked, God, tell me, you know, I'm doing so many, you know, it's not that you're not serving already. You might be serving in many areas of life, but there could be still pockets where you're not having rest. And then you just uh, dig deep in your heart and say, Lord, where is this area that I have to change? I'm doing all this, but still I lack a certain type of rest in my life. How can I do better, Lord? Where is it that you want me to carry your burden further? And the Lord will reveal it to you. And one of the things, the practical way of realizing what God wants from you and to hear from him is to ask the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. I, I told eight different things that could are the burden of God. There could be more. It's not an exhaustive list. But then you sit at God's feet and say, Lord, which burden do you particularly want me to carry? Has God, has the Lord called you to be an intercessor? Has God, has God called you to be a liberal giver? Has God called you to be an encourager? Has God called you into kids ministry where you equip the next generation? Has God called you to the outreach ministry that is going to happen every, sat every other Saturday? Where is God calling you? You will feel the tug in your heart as you hear these words. Because the Lord wants you to carry his burden so that you could have rest. So that you can live a successful life. That you can be a testimony, an example for the generations. So that you can make a king impact for kingdoms so that you can be rewarded in heaven one day. It's all in your best interest, the Lord says all these things. He's got heaven and earth. He, he has everything he needs. He doesn't need anything from us. But yet he wants to form his children. He's forming us through this process. And what is the practical way of doing? You know, I'd like to read this uh, last verse from Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11. 
for with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to this people to whom he said this is the rest in which you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing let me read it again for with stammering lips and with another tongue he will speak to this people to whom he said this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing and here the lord is talking about how he will speak to us through stammering lips and in another tongue it signifies the speaking in tongues paul in 1 corinthians chapter 14 verse 21 to 22 he refers the very same verses from isaiah and he talks about the edification that comes from speaking in tongues when you speak in tongues there is a rest that comes upon you because you start praying in the spirit you start ask the holy spirit takes over you and he prays according to what the father wants to hear and you come to a place of rest you come to a place of rest and this is the place where the lord will reveal to your spirit what is the burden concerning what is his burden concerning you what is that particular burden that god wants you to carry for him that day simon of cyrene he passed by and he said lord i'll carry that cross for you for a few moments and he did and that was a moment of refreshing for jesus today the lord looks at you and says what are you going to carry for me i will carry every burden of yours every laboring every heavy laden burdens that you carry on yourself whether it be psychological it could be spiritual bondages it could be financial bondages it could be mental pressures i am willing to take all of that what is it you're going to carry with stammering to- lips and with the tongues the lord will reveal that specific unique burden that is upon you if only you would seek the lord and spend some time i encourage each one of you to take some time and pray and say lord what is it that you want me to do i'm open and willing to you i'm completely surrendered to you i don't want you to carry your burden all by yourself lord and when i come and you take my burden so freely it is the least i could do for you lord it's the least i could do for you how much you have loved me how much you have given yourself for me and yet again you call us this morning and say come and give me that burden come and lay that at my feet come and let it go that you don't have to carry it anymore lord i will carry whatever you want me to carry for you for those who have not been filled with the holy spirit in speaking in tongues i strongly urge you seek the infilling of the holy spirit the rest that comes from speaking in tongues is amazing many times before going for interviews or going before presentations or work i just stand there and speak in tongues it's just the calmness that comes over you is unbelievable seek the lord and say lord holy spirit fill me up this morning 